Hi friends, I thank you for joining us for this webinar, which is representative of presentation of unique green products in a unique digital way. I'm sure all of you know pretty well about Navina Denim NDL, which is one of the very well known denim companies from Pakistan and around the world also. They've always been very really focused on innovation and I'm not surprised uh, to see them coming out with uh, some great ones again. They have been working on 100% hemp products uh, for some time and they have launched uh, a collection recently. Hemp, as we all know, has a long history and is more sustainable than cotton. Navina has worked out some cool products using 100% hemp, which is a great achievement. Besides, they have come out with some other interesting categories like uh, natural softs and exclusive blacks. And the Navina team will speak about them. Uh, these, uh, you know, they will speak about five concepts which uh, they've come out with. I'll be inviting Navina team shortly to speak about these concepts. Uh, but before that, I would like to add, add a few words about our digital platform rebrands. This is the first of its kind digital denim platform globally and on which we had been working for over two and a half years now and uh, we had launched it last year. The aim of this platform, uh, which is both an app and a web platform also, is to bring together a denim supply chain at one place where the denim community uh, does business, network, and see latest developments. Navina has been one of our earliest supporters and I thank, you, uh, thank them for this. Currently, we have over 35 uh, denim supply chain companies on this platform. And uh, besides uh, professionals from over 120 buying companies who are registered with us and interacting with the companies and also among themselves. And this number is definitely increasing every day. So not taking more of your time, I would like to invite the executive director of Navina, Mr. Rashid Kibal, and uh, denim consultant and dear friend, uh, Mohsin Sajid, to join for the presentation. Hi, how are you? Rashid Hi, Cindy. And, uh, how are Mohsin, you? How are you? I'm fine. How are you? Hi, Hi Sandeep. Yeah. First of all, thank you so much for your kind words of introduction. And uh, I'm happy to be part of the, today's webinar and especially dbrands, which is definitely going to play a very vital role in the times to come. Uh, although we have been affiliated with this for almost what, more than one year now, but I think uh, it's more important now and we will see the best utility of this um, you know, showcase uh, options now. Absolutely. So, thank you I yeah. how are oh, you? How's things? Very well, thank you. I'm very busy. Uh, COVID time has been quite interesting for us. We've uh, become now video experts for loads of people. It's really funny, but I'm um, really, really busy, but really happy and, and keeping ourselves busy. So, yeah, I'm really happy to be working and I appreciate you guys inviting me on this panel to talk and excited by it. So, thank you. Yeah, uh, you know, that's a uh, pleasure. And, uh, you know, I mean, uh, Navina is like, you know, Everybody has been reinventing our, uh, ourselves and uh, I see that, uh, you know, all of us are, you know, adding more profiles for to, uh, to the things what we are doing. Navina has been innovating strongly in these times. So we would like to know a little more uh, what the new innovations are coming out. Well, yes, sure, Sandeep. And uh, I would love to share the presentation with you if I can have the slide up uh, on the screen, please. And, uh, okay, first of all, uh, Thank you everyone for joining us for this uh, webinar for, to review our Autumn Winter 2021 collection. Um, I will be talking about uh, the presentation and basically is divided in three uh, parts. First of all, it's gonna be current and uh, post pandemic scenario, and then some of the, the green uh, initiatives that Mill has taken in last few months and how we have prepared ourselves for the post pandemic uh, uh, scenes. And then of course, uh, the most important, the collection. Um, talking about the current and uh, post-pandemic scenarios, very honestly, uh, back in March when we went to total shutdown or total lockdown, at that time, things really didn't make that much sense to us. Um, now I look back and see, I think that was the best decision by the government, by every one of us. Uh, numbers have uh, reduced. We were able to control the numbers both. I see the numbers every day, both in Pakistan and uh, India. In fact, the whole South Asia was able to uh, 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 keep the numbers down. So that was very good um, uh, move. And right now, the current scenario, since we have just uh, 
got done with our Eid holidays and government had to open up the lockdown. So we are a little bit concerned that numbers might slightly increase. But having said that, everybody's again back to the practicing the safe social distances and everything else that we can do. Um, Mohsin, if you'd like to add about your uh, situation there in London. Let me unmute myself. Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, it's been um, it's been really interesting in 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 like London actually. Um, we we our government's been I don't know they've been hiding things or, or not not being honest about some of the things that have been going on. But we're slowly coming out of lock lockdown here. I think in the next two weeks, by the fifteenth of June, um, some schools will be open. Some things are gradually happening, but we're seeing things in other parts of the world where people are coming out of lockdown and there's another spike. So. We're a bit nervous here about that. So, yeah, I'm not too sure. But hopefully things are heading in the right direction. But it's still still early days, actually. It is. Yes, you're right. And I think uh, uh, with now the announcements of Europe and US markets opening a little bit, there is a positive vibes across uh, the board. And I see um, the cutters have now started uh, setting some inquiries. So finally, we have now started our production two weeks back. So it's, it's a good sign. And I hope it continues. Let's just hope for the best. So uh, very quickly, we'll talk about the presentation. We can have the uh, next slide. Uh, I guess we've already talked about this and then how we're going to prepare. Whatever the situation is and the way we at Navina look at the post-pandemic situation, we are committed to be part of tomorrow's post-pandemic sustainable supply chain. And what we have done for that are a few initiatives. If we can have the next slide. Some of the green initiatives that Navina has taken uh, in past few months and uh, the next slide, of course. Uh, recycled cotton. We all know how important it is to have the recycled cotton and we have been talking about post-consumer waste all this time. Uh, what we did uh, three months back is we had our own shredder and the idea behind was to use our own industrial waste. Yes, we are today in a position to give you a pre-consumer waste, which is not available anywhere else because of course we are producing it. That means we are slowly gradually going to be moving towards zero waste. So this is something important that we feel that, you know, uh, our customers would be definitely interested. So it's not only post, it's also pre-consumer waste. Uh, all our products are GRS and RCS certified. Um, uh, we have done developments with up to 20%. Uh, as we all know, it's recycled, there are imperfections. Uh, we are challenged with the strength in the tear and tensile, but we have made sure that whatever we're offering to the market, it, has, it passes all the required physical. So what we are now planning to do is slowly, gradually move towards 30, 35%. And that's what the engineers are working on. So that's one thing that I wanted to share with you, that in my collection now, you will be seeing a lot of 20% uh, recycled cotton, especially the pre-consumer uh, waste. And uh, one of the next important things that we have done is the sanitization of fabric. Yes, I really want to talk about it. Uh, I'm sure you must have heard about Genealogia's role in Spanish government and how they have participated in using their own ozone gas uh, in sterilizing the mask and the protective wear for the uh, 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 nursing staff and, and people like that. so. Ozone gas, we all know it's very important in uh, sterilizing. So what, what happened was last month, Genealogy approached us and they said, since we already have the G2 ozone and we were the first one two years back when we invested in this technology and the idea back then was to be able to save water, which we did and we are still continuing producing uh, fabric with ozone finishing, uh, which means 75% less uh, water on our fabrics we now can certify these ozone finished fabrics as sterilized G2 dynamic finished fabric by following certain guidelines and protocols given by Genealogia. So the moment we heard about this, the whole team was very excited and we started working on it. We signed a contract and we made sure we start following the guidelines. And the idea really behind this was that it's not only about the well-being of our own employees, it's also about the well-being of the employees who are going to handle this fabric on the cutting tables. 
So that is also important. When we learn and we investigated, we did some research on this and all the details that Genealogia has shared with us, the testing reports and the details, we were quite convinced that, you know, with our sanitized uh, fabrics, the cutters are going to be at peace while handling them. So at least they will not be under stress at thinking at how uh, these fabrics rolls were handled at Novena. So there has been a growing interest from uh, some of the brands who were already buying uh, uh, ozone finished fabrics. And now they have asked us to make sure that, you know, these uh, fabrics are sanitized as well. So that is something important. And having said this, we'll continue doing more in this direction because I think uh, uh, the well-being of our people comes first. And it's, of course, going to be received very well by the customers also when they walk in the stores. So these are the two important things that I, uh, we have done. And uh, I'll talk about the collection that we are planning to launch. Uh, uh, so if we can have the next slide, uh, please. So again, uh, the two, uh, AW2021, there are a few very exciting uh, uh, developments that we were going to showcase in Amsterdam last month, but we all know because of the situation and it went uh, um, uh, virtual and then we, were, uh, we did not uh, display everything because of the privacy reasons and it was all available for everyone. So what we decided was that, you know, we would start uh, giving one-on-one -on -one, uh, presentation. And then uh, when Sandeep came to us, I thought this would be a brilliant idea to sh showcase some of our interesting fabrics. So if we can have uh, the next slide, I'll tell you what exactly we're doing. Uh, there are four concepts and the first and foremost, the most important and very dear to us and which we are really excited about is the high on hemp. Uh, we, managed to make a fabric which was 100% hemp. And I really would like uh, you know, Mohsin to talk about it because we did this project together. And uh, over to you, Mohsin. Wow, okay. Um, well, um, okay, I, I can jump on now. Thank you so much for inviting me. Um, it's, it's been actually amazing. And we, uh, we've been working, well, we've known each other for many, many years, actually. We've been friends as well. And, and, and when you came to me, going a couple of months ago saying, hey, I would like you to help us do some research about hemp, if you could do. And I did that and it was really fun. I learned so much about it. We learned it together, which was amazing. But the important thing is hemp has been around for years. You know, it's been, it's been around for more than 10,000 years. It's one of the <coughs> earliest, earliest fibers. We actually were using hemp earlier than cotton. So there's evidence for that. And it's got, and the fact that we've been using it for so long, we've known more about it. We've known how to spin it. We've known how to use it. it yes, it, the old style hemp, which everyone associates with, it's, it's, it's like the wet spinning. It basically feels like linen, so it's a bit rougher. And, and it's only in the 80s where we figured out a way of spinning it differently with the cottonized hemp. So a lot has changed. But hemp's had, as I said, a very bad rap. It's, um, it's you know, it's it, it hand in hand with cannabis. Like everyone thinks it's the same thing, and it's not. It's, it's actually a cousin of the cannabis like sativa plant, and you can't get high off it. We've been using it for so long. It, it was used... For making ropes and sails but many other things as well and in europe we learned how to use hemp but only about only about three or four thousand years ago but but before that there's evidence that they found it in like iraq and, and also in like sort of like mesopotamia and, and like everywhere else but the, the the pant that we did for you guys and one, one of the things that i asked you rashid very uh, very early on because i think you were experimenting with 20 percent and 40 percent because hemp is still quite expensive it's it's, it's there's Look, you know, there's, there's still, there's very high demand for it. So hopefully, inshallah, in the next few years, the price will come down and we'll see it a lot more. But there is a future in hemp, for sure. And, you know, the fact that it, it uses literally a quarter of the amount of water that cotton does, the land mass that is grown on, you can use the entire plant, so everything gets used. Um, it's so many positive things about it versus cotton. Obviously, cotton's amazing. We love it as well. But we know it's a very thirsty plant. And it's not sustainable keep on keep on having more cotton and keep on growing cotton so our demand for cotton we have to change the, the the practice of it so the fact that you guys are going into hemp and experimenting and really doing a lot of research and development probably far beyond a lot of the other mills at the moment so you're definitely leading the way so one of the things that i asked you guys was could you do a hundred percent hemp and you guys went back and you did your tinkering and you actually developed a fabric and you very kindly sent me, only, I think only about five meters or so. It wasn't very much. It was like a hand loom development. And you said, do you think you can use it? And I, I made a pant in a few days and 
it was really beautiful to work with. I thought, you know, yeah, it, it was a wet sponge, but it was really soft as well. So it'd be interesting to see when we as a designers get to see your other cottonized and your other developments in October or later on this year. But it was a beautiful fa fabric to work with. And um, just a little bit of history, you know, um, early garments, they were always in uh, nat a natural color and they were always in an ind indigo color and they were always in a duck color. So these were the three main prominent colors. So the fact that you did it in a natural color first, just to understand it, it was brilliant. And you know, this particular fabric that you guys did, yeah, okay, it was a one over one. Most canvases at this early period were two over two. But as I said, you started from the beginning, you're researching and it's really ex exciting to see. And it was roughly an 11 or 12 ounce fabric that you like, you like developed. And it's just very cool. And I was very honored to use the very first 100% hemp and I managed to put my denim history buttons and like sort of rivets on it. I thought it actually, actually like, actually like deserved it, which is really, really fun. And, um, but yeah, that, that's enough of it. I thought, you know, it was a really fun project and I, I really thank you for inviting me to give that little bit of history about it. But uh, over to you, like Rashid. Well, thank you so much, uh, um, Mohsin. But uh, just one thing that I liked where you said you don't get high on it. I think you get high on fashions with the hand denims. So that's important. Uh, and, uh, anyways, uh, we have uh, uh, uploaded a few interesting fabrics. Uh, we now have uh, uh, a hand uh, fabrics with hemp composition starting from 17% to 100%. And going forward, we will be doing some of uh, uh, three by ones uh, indigo diet. So uh, there are more to, uh, coming up in, uh, in the next exhibitions in the next time. So uh, the hand feel, of course, uh, was important uh, because this is all um, wet spun yarn. Uh, the experience was good. Like uh, Mohsen said, our idea was to try it on the looms and see how this um, uh, harsh yarn is behaving on the looms and how uh, what happens with the finishing range. So the experience was very good and we are quite confident and quite comfortable now uh, doing three by ones. So uh, that's for the hemp part and, uh, and I like to share some of the interesting uh, uh, developments that we did. Since it's the autumn winter 21, uh, we came up with the warm and cozy uh, line which is basically a brush back fabric. And again, um, Brush bag fabric is also quite challenging because it has got to meet certain requirements like no back filling and it has to have that certain crow value in order to qualify uh, to make sure that you are getting that required uh, uh, performance uh, in terms of getting the warm, keeping you warm and so on. So we did a lot of work, a lot of developments last season before we could come up with the line and started offering to the market. Now we are quite confident that what we are offering and what kind of compositions we have. So something very interesting on the other slide, if we can. What we did was, uh, okay. Uh, basically we played with uh, three fibers and I'm gonna talk about Miyabi real quick because this is something again, very exclusive to Novena. There are hardly two mills I know of which is allowed to use Miyabi in their denims. One is uh, one mill is in Turkey and the other one is us, Novena. So what is Mayavi? Mayavi is basically an acrylic fiber. It's ultra soft and smooth like silk. It keeps you warm and it is being produced in Japan by Mitsubishi. So they have a control over it. And uh, uh, we have done certain developments and we have done some orders in Miyabi. So what we did was we used Miyabi uh, and we did some brush bag options with this. So this is something very exclusive. It's a premium product. It serves the purpose. As I said, it feels like silk. So it's soft, it keeps you warm. And of course, if you have the brush bag uh, feature on the, on the denim, so it adds more to, it, uh, to the performance. Uh, then we did uh, uh, some developments with the True Touch, which is very, very new again by Unify. Uh, True Touch, again, this is a recycled polyester. And basically, the way they have uh, 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 done the mechanical development with this, it feels like cotton. So, this is important. This polyester based fiber definitely feels like cotton and it is recycled and of course it has got all the performing uh, features in it so that was the second development second fiber that we have used and then again uh, thermolite i'm sure everybody knows about it uh, but we did use some thermolite also in our uh, collection so you will again see some very interesting developments on the app on, with respect to our uh, performing fabrics uh, which are brush packs 
Um, if we can have the next slide, please. Just to give you an idea, so this, when, when I say brush bag, doesn't mean it's a fleece or it's just you know a jogging pants. It's just a three by one regular pants uh, uh, dyed in different uh, shades. It has got uh, same denim characters, highs and lows, and just about everything. It's just that it keeps you warm. It feel fits and feels well. So, and this is this particular fabric is about Miyabi composition. Um, and then we go to the next slide and the next concept is about our exclusive black denims. Now, when I say exclusive black denim, I mean that we have been talking and discussing about black shades with different cust uh, customers and brands and uh, designers. And I know that everybody has been challenged with the way blacks wash down, especially when you see the red cast and the brownsiness on the fabric as you wash them down. So that is quite, uh, it's a big no for everyone and for years and years everybody's been struggling trying to uh, somehow develop the recipe. We finally came up with the sulfur based dyes imported from Europe and uh, we worked on the shade, we did some developments and finally we were able to crack this and now the exclusive black denims as you wash them you will see a bluer tone. Yes, that's important for us. So uh, in this particular concept, you will sh see the shades, they do not turn into dirty bronzy color. Uh, as I said, they go towards the bluish tone, both grays and dark blacks. Even after a long bleach wash, it appears a bluish uh, black gray shade. And uh, there is an example that I can share with you right here. Uh, if we can uh, uh, zoom it and enlarge it a little bit so we can get an idea of what, how the shade band is washing down. Is, it, is that possible, Mohsen? Or, or we can do it in the, in the app uh, because there is a complete range again um, uh, uh, uploaded there. So again, very interesting as you can see the highs and lows and the way it washes down. If you see the uh, wash down from dark black all the way to the last bluer tone. So that is important. And, and this has been received very well. Again, we did some trials, but again, before really coming up with a complete collection, both in men's and women's, we wanted to make sure that, you know, what we're talking about, we've seen the washes in uh, all the way to bleaches. So this is something very interesting that we have come up with. Uh, over to the next slide. Now this third slide about natural soft, again, uh, when we say natural soft, of course, soft hands, uh, soft feel, which is the most important thing right now. And when I say natural soft, I mean 100% cotton natural soft. Uh, we all know cotton mm, is very soft by, by nature, but the way it has been spun and the processes it has to go through, it ends up being a very harsh fabric. And you know, uh, even at the time of laundry, you see a lot of chemical residuals left on the fabric. So what we thought was to how we can retain the original softness on the fabric. So the idea was once the fabric is finished, we should be able to feel the same sponginess, same softness on the fabric. What we did, since we have our own spinning, which gives us quite a, a big option of doing a lot of R&D at this yarn stage. So basically we did the yarn spinning geometry. We, we re-engineered the process in a way that we could retain the softness of cotton at the yarn stage. And this was done on 100% cotton. There was no man-made fiber added to this. And then of course the process, how we can uh, minimize the process, the tension in the process, how we are pulling the, fa the, the, the yarn at different stages in the, in the process. So we worked on it. We did some advanced chemistry where reduced salts and extra chemicals were used to make sure that you know, the softness of the uh, uh, yarn is there in the fabric. So what happens and what do we achieve from this? If you can have a next slide, please. So the benefits and how it all um, uh, narrows down to is the enhanced softness without the addition of any man-made fibers or chemicals. It has got the velvet soft touch. It's got very, very spongy small, uh, and soft. Uh, it, it's a quick wash off at laundry. It enhances the laser efficiency. So it's a laser sensitive fabric basically. And we have done uh, many trials with the uh, uh, lasers on it. So we know uh, how the fabric is reacting to different intensities of the fabrics. And we have done comparative studies of a con same fabric finished conventional way versus the natural soft way. So we can see the fabric difference and it is available now. If anybody's interested, we'd be more than happy because 
no matter how much I talk about the softness, you have to be able to experience it, feel it. So I'll just leave it up to you guys to you know, reach out to us and uh, uh, feel it yourself. Uh, just to give you an idea, you know, it has got the character. This is just one of the pure indigo shades that I have. It's a three by one with T400s. Um, it's got a nice soft touch. And by the way, this is not only for the heavyweight fabrics because this uh, technology works for the lighter weights. If you re-engineer the yarn, which is the coarser yarn, yes, it worked there. But with the process innovation, we were able to retain the softness on the uh, uh, lightweight fabrics also. So this is, was important for us. Uh, and I'm, we are very happy that, you know, we'll be uh, showcasing this natural soft concept without any man-made fibers added to it. So that's one important thing. And then finally is the gold rush. And as the name appears and you, uh, you must be thinking again, the same old uh, uh, vintage and it's a new name for the same old collection. Yes, it is. You're right. But there is the same old look with a different touch, a slightly different touch in what we are offering. Of course, this is a sustainable denims with old style. Uh, the textural appeal is there. The drapes easily in spite of looking heavy. You would see that, you know, it's quite heavier, but it's not actually. Uh, it's supremely comfortable. Why? I'll share it with you in the, in, in the next slide. What we have done, we have restricted uh, uh, this, these developments on few guidelines to make sure that the authenticity and the real vintage look is there. Uh, there is no restricted bold constructions in this the authentic and redefined looks are very, very visible. We have made sure that we uh, keep our developments to the two shades. One is the most iconic red cast. And of course the uh, smart black, the, the bluer, the new executive, the, the new black that we have come up with. Uh, the collection is done both in uh, rigids and stretches and covers both uh, genders. Again, uh, we have added the PCW both pre and post are available um, depending on the requirements from the customer's side. Uh, by the way, by adding the, uh, uh, the recycled cotton, as we know, there were so many impurities. So that actually complemented and added a lot to this vintage look. Uh, the cracks and the, un the natural slubs, although this was not uh, with the slab so that these things really added to it and again then uh, this fabric is um, finished on ozone so that means it's waterless sustainable denim plus we are sanitizing it so these are few added uh, features with this uh, gold rush uh, collection the weight ranges for men is from 12 to 13 ounces, and then for women's it's like 11 to 12 ounces. so all these interesting fabrics are now available at D brands uh, just to give you an option of uh, what it looks like and uh, we'll, we'll get to see some more pictures um, and I'd now like to um, uh, uh, hand it over to Menka and Zishan so they could uh, walk us through the app. Thank you all. Okay. So thank you Mr. Rashid. Now I'll take everyone to the Navina Denims Limited showroom on D Brands. This is how you can search for the exhibitor. As you can see, this is the showroom of Navina Denim, the profile. Now we are moving on to the products. Now I request Mr. Zishan to please describe the collections which Navina Denim has uploaded on the app. Thank you, Manga. Thank you very much. So <clears throat> we, are, we are showcasing our five concept in Autumn Winter 21. So we have uh, uploaded our five concept in deep brand. So first we would like to go through high on hemp. Hi, this is sustainable hemp collection where we have developed hemp fabric from 18% to 100%. So we have uploaded few articles here and we have public only one article here, 5252 F01 which is very nice dark shade. Width is nice. It's like a 58 cutable width. You can see the fabric wash downs from dark to light. Fabric look, especially in raw. It's very vintage, authentic look. It's, it's a sea green shade which outcome is very nice in after laundry. 
Ankur, can you please move on the next concept? Warm and cozy. This concept is specially designed for a winter, which is basically backside brush denim, where we have used three technologies, uh, Miyabi, uh, micro acrylic fiber, two touch by Unify, third one is Thermolite. So you can see very nice dark shade. This is backside brush denim, which keep you warm in winter, body insulation and wear to comfort. And we have open one article here, 4941 AMW15. The rest of the articles can be review on a special request. Now we are moving on the next concept, which is natural soft. Natural soft is basically we are as um, Cotton is very soft fiber. So we are bringing back the natural softness of the cotton. Here we have only uh, public one article, 5406 and 63, where we have work on a yarn stage and we have work on a fabric manufacturing process without addition of any special fiber or special chemical. Fabric performs naturally. You can see high and lows. It's very soft natural denim. There is no man-made or synthetic or some chemical in it. Now we are moving on next concept, which is exclusive black. This is basically denimish black, I would say. Why denimish black? Denim is blue. And this shade behaves in a bluish tone after laundry. You know, we are facing a problem, especially in blacks, very dirty brown. So this fabric outcome is very nice. You can see the wash tones, especially in a lighter wash, you can see the real dynamic black tone. Here we have a <clears throat> few articles, but we are showing only 4913A14. We have public only one article. The rest of the articles can be open on a special approval. Now we are moving on the next, last, our last, next, last concept, which is Gold Rush. This is basically authentic, sustainable concept. It look heavy, but we are in a comfort. It's very nice, iconic red cast shade. You can see the wash downs to a line. It's very pronounced character here. Salt and peppery look. Here we have a few articles. We have uploaded a few articles, but we have public only one article at the moment. The sub article can be viewed on a special request. Now I would like to request to Manka to explain further feature of this collection, how to our customer reach on a collection and how they can view the whole collection. Over to Manka. Thank you, Zeeshan. Thank you so much for the beautiful presentation. Now I would give a basic tour of the app as to what the buyers can do to the exhibitor's showroom. See, for example, this is not the product. You can uh, chat with the exhibitor. You can just click here and you can communicate with the exhibitor directly. These are all the details. You can comment on the product and this way you will be able to communicate with the exhibitor, uh, whichever you like. Then we will move on to the home page. This is the basic home page of our app. Now there is the approved exhibitor section in which uh, as Zeeshan told you that um, many of the products is private. So you need to request the access to view their private product. So you can come here, you can send the approval request. As soon as you soon the approval request and you get approved, you will be able to see the complete collection of the exhibitor and uh, the private products also. Then in the app, we have the add requirement section. As you can see, you can put in your requirement. I want tensor. So something like that, you can put it here. You can upload your picture. You can select the exhibitors from here. 
and you can send your requirement to them this way they will be notified about your requirements then we have the product list over here then we have the my cats you know you have your favorite categories you can come here you can add your categories delete your categories see suppose my favorite categories are fibers pcw multiple ways i only want to see the products in these categories so you can filter out your favorite categories you can stick there and you can have the look at all the products which fall under those categories similarly there are a lot of way of communicating you can communicate with the other buyers on the app you can come here visit their profile and you can directly chat with them you can chat with any of the mills on the app as you see there are so many mills from different uh, yawners like uh, you know garment fabric chemicals technologies you can come here and you can just type in and your chat messages here you can contact them so it's a very easy process of communicating with uh, each and everybody on the app and building the network and you can also search suppose you know i want to search something in stretch so i just need to type in stretch and this gives me the complete collection of stretch see for example you know navina has launched hemp so if i Uh, select hemp so all the collections from hemp will come over here so it's a very easy and very user friendly pl platform for you to communicate with everybody to post your requirement to be updated for all the latest products which we have uploaded so uh, we request you to download the app and uh, you know see the collection especially especially navina's collection is there with all the latest products they have and we uh, you can explore the digital denim platform thank you so much thank you manka think you got the idea i mean the collection is the entire collection is there on the brands and those who are already uh, you know on the app they can interact with this uh, with this uh, products of navina you can save them you can send a chat to navina and uh, they will uh, reply to you immediately in few minutes so that's the beauty of the app that you can uh, kind of interact with the company's products very quickly uh, now let's uh, move on to some uh, questions on um, uh question and q and a and uh, those who want to ask question please share that uh, in the q and a section right now and in the meantime i would like to ask uh, rashid i mean you know you spoke about him the name and uh, you shown the products also now uh, i would like to know what is uh, this how it is going to be uh, is it already in the commercialization stage or uh, and when when can we see the indigo version of it so uh, what's the status on this uh yes sandeep our initial plan was to showcase it uh, in this last uh, uh, amsterdam show uh, but because of the uh, pandemic scenario of fibers and everything got stuck and the factory was shut down so we uh, have started uh, the production now and we are on the in the development stage uh, since this is going to be a wax spun yarn so nobody has experienced this on the ropes Uh, we are excited to take this challenge and let's see what comes out um as we stated earlier that our commitment is to have a 3 by 1 uh, different shades in uh, of indigos in this so uh, we are now planning to uh, showcase this in the next upcoming important event which is of course king pens uh, uh, scheduled in october i guess so i hope everything and the situation is fine and we are open it will exhibit so that's where you will get to see uh, not only the 100% hemp but many more exciting fabrics in this direction of hemp so that's what is on the on the list it would be wonderful to see the what john facts on this uh... we are all excited you know and especially sandeep has been pushing you know he wants to have some yardies so he could do some uh, garments on that so uh, let's see how it comes out all right uh, should we take one question from the uh, visitors uh, you know it's from rowan of course you already i think you already clarified that uh, can you make 100% hand pin 3 by 1 i think you already clarified that but if you want to say anything else on this uh yes uh, like i said uh, we have already told you that you know we are in the process of making different shades um uh, just to add to it because this is going to be um, the natural wax spun which is which comes in kind of yellowish uh, color but the next step would be to have it bleached in the weft so that is one thing and the important thing which i have uh, had to receive many questions uh, from different people about the moqs because it's an expensive fiber the fabric starts from somewhere it Uh, to $12 you know and this is 100% hemp is going to be more expensive so they were challenged with the uh, moq so we are flexible on this one it's not about making money it's about making a real fabric 
live in the old times. So that is important for us. And we are planning to work with uh, some small designers, developers also, so they can experience it, they can get their hands on it and uh, do some wonders with this fabric. So that is the idea. It's not a marketing gimmick. It's not about making money. It's about doing something good for the industry. And that's our commitment. And that's the whole idea behind this. And I hope it uh, reaches to the commercial level also. Uh, but as of now, this is the wish list. Okay. And uh, the next question is from Pietro Valenti. Uh, how exactly does ozone sanitize the fabrics? Uh, maybe have a you know, little uh, elaboration on this point. Yes, Mr. Pietro Valentri, the name is very, very familiar. He's a good friend. Hi, Pietro, how are you? Uh, such interesting questions could only come from a technical guy like Pietro. Um, Pietro, um, I'm just going to be talking about very briefly and if you need the details, we can share it with you on the mails and uh, uh, you already know the advantages of ozone gas and how uh, it sterilizes and what they have done in Spain, especially uh, if you have seen some of the blogs of uh, Enrique, uh, the way they have uh, uh, sterilized the masks and the protective gears. So similarly, uh, there the, in this process of uh, ozone finishing, the G2 machine, it's a closed chamber and it is, uh, 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 there's no water in, used in this finishing. We have been using this for the last two years. It's a, simply a, a very good alternate to moisturized fabric where there is basically no chemical and no water. So it's all ozone gas. So ozone, we all know, has been uh, playing a very important role in sanitizing the fabrics. The added thing that we was required is, of course, the handling of the fabric. And there are certain guidelines uh, that uh, I can share with you separately on the emails that how you handle and how you finish the fabric on the sand floor. So those things are important before we can even claim. Having said this, uh, there has uh, uh, Genealogy has shared a number of test reports and the surveys and uh, studies done on this. And I'll be happy to share those with you. Uh, I'm sure this is not enough for a technical guy like you would want to know the nitty gritty, but I'll be happy to share with you once we get off this uh, webinar. Okay, so the next one is coming from uh, Satish. Uh, what are the difficulties in high on hemp in spinning and indigo dyes? Is it possible to generate fancy washes on it? Of course, I, I can clarify a bit on this uh, because it's all not indigo dyed yet. But uh, I mean, what are the difficulties do you face in this kind of product? Uh, that's a very good and interesting question, I tell you, because our first hemp collection came out last season and uh, there were many challenges. Uh, our experience is, uh, has been uh, very unique and I would love to share with all the Dunning fraternity so they know what the challenges could be. It's not only just any hemp. So, so up till now, uh, the hemp yarn has been used in the weft. It is the easiest way to do it. You know, just have the wet spun and do it. The real challenge would be how to use it in the warp. Like I said earlier, nobody has used the wet spun. What we did last season was the cottonized hemp version. And when we were uh, researching on this, and I myself, along with my team, and Azisha on the R&D head, we went to China. Kingdom Mills is one of the largest producers of hemp. We just wanted to make sure, you know, to understand how it grows and what the life cycle assessment is. And now, good thing is that our uh, supplier is GOTS certified. So we have a proper life cycle assessment that can be given to uh, serious buyers who are concerned about the, uh, uh, the footprints on this. So uh, about the experience, because it's a harsh yarn, and uh, we've talked to some spinners in, in China also, and their experience was that they were comfortable doing a uh, blend of 25% hemp with cotton. And uh, so therefore the first development which we did in-house was 25, 25%. We started off with that just to make sure that, you know, we have our hands uh, clear on the spinning side. Um, once we did that and the team was very confident on the yarn stage, we immediately went up to 40%. So in today, when I say I have a fabric with a composition of up to 57%, so it's warp, cottonized, it's wet, it's, there are rigid versions. And then we did different kind of blends. We blended the cottonized yarn with tensile. It was important because it's a harsh yarn and we wanted to make a, a soft story for women also. So one of the first developments we did was with tensile uh, after uh, cotton. And then we did uh, uh, poly cotton like rub blends. 
so these were some of the interesting blends we did. Uh, our experience with dyeing was very, very interesting. The dye pickability we noticed was improved and quite different. What we did was, as a compared studies, we did the same kind of constructions which we were doing in, say, for a, uh, for the sake of discussion and pure indigo shade. We picked the same shade, same construction, same yarn count. And when we did a wash down, we saw a very unique optic as the fabric washes down because of the impurities on the yarn stage. We could see the natural slub character. As far as uh, the yarn behaving, the cottonized yarn behaving on the on the ropes was fine. We had no breakage, no problems. Uh, the loom stage was fine. So our experience was very interesting, uh, but. The result was extremely fascinating, the way it washes down, the uniqueness and the imperfections actually added to the character of the authentic denim. So that was something very interesting. So we have now have around uh, 30 some fabrics in our collection and we are already doing some developments for some of the uh, very well known brands uh, in US and UK. Uh, Hugo Boss is one of them uh, just to add uh, in, in Europe and then we have some interesting uh, uh, customers in the US. So this is a very serious thing and the customers are really paying a lot of attention. Of course, I mean, it's uh, something uh, new. It is something uh, uh, eco-friendly and it's something very difficult to do. So, I mean, which you have done it and probably you are going to add uh, many more things to it. So I think it's a wonderful development. The only challenge right now I feel is that it's the price and I believe if more and more uh, customers and brands start uh, using ham, the scale is going to increase. And the moment the size and the scale of harvest or the crop goes bigger, I'm sure that we will have a better price also. So that is one of the things and my wish list is in the way we are pushing it. And so are the other mills. Just about every mill now has a ham uh, fabric in the collection. So uh, more and more ham comes in to the play. Uh, we go back to old times to the real natural uh, fabrics and it has got many, many uh, other uh, features like, you know, uh, antimicrobacterial, natural antimicrobacterial and then uh, so on and so There are interesting things uh, attached to hemp. I would just like to add as well, obviously, you know, we were on a panel together, you know, with other mills and we were all competitors, but we were all talking openly about the positives and negatives. So hemp is actually brought a lot of the community together in a, in a really positive way, I feel. And it's been really fun working on this hemp project with you and some, you know, and other projects. But anyway, I would just like to add that there's some amazing, like, quest amazing questions. I hope we get through them all. Yeah, <laughs> okay. Please carry on. So, uh, one, uh, again, uh, you know, uh, let us take one, uh, one more on hemp is uh, the damage part, you know, is from Jigger. He's saying that uh, this already, you know, if, you know, even if you use a small percentage of uh, hemp, there's a good amount of wastage. So how you will control the damage? You know, Damage you get in the markets. Uh, what kind of damage? I'm not sure. I mean, uh, seconds or you know, I mean the, uh, the uh, you know the uh, wastage, uh, the wastage. So biodegradable. The best thing is this is a natural fiber. It's biodegradable. So when we talk about uh, wastages, it's, uh, we are talking about circular uh, circularity here. So that's no, I mean the cost of in terms of adding costs, you know, wastage in oh, terms of. Hey, that is already incorporated. When I say uh, today, just to give you an idea, a, a ballpoint uh, price, you know, a, 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 a hem fabric starting with 17% uh, hem composition uh, would cost around $4.5 a yard and it goes all the way to uh, 15 uh, or $18. So it depends on the kind of the composition you have. And the wastages are already uh, accounted for in our costing. Okay. That was the question was, right? That's absolutely. And uh, there's another one from Pietro coming is, um, how do you compare linen and hemp? <laughs> Pietro, you know what, we need to do a panel discussion with you so you can share your view. You know, you're one of the most technical guys I know. And actually, uh, uh, he has been consulting us all on, on some of the interesting developments. So he knows what he's talking about. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to share it on the, on the, on the <laughs> chat. Oh, I can add it. I can add to something. Having worked with the first 100%, um, it was, I thought it was quite soft. And yeah, it did have a linen type feel for sure. Um, you know, it had a feel that when you ironed it or pressed it, it, it kept its shape. So it keeps memory. So, you know, they are, these are things that I'm sure you guys are going to work on to try and, but maybe that's the characteristic of hemp. We can't make it completely like cotton. So, and we shouldn't really, but, you know. No, on a lighter note, uh, Pietro, uh, the thing is, you will not get high smoking linen. So that's one of the difference for sure. 
absolutely you know uh, i'll take another question on uh, regarding you know the current uh, uh, the tendency of the apparel retailers and all of the brands to reduce their turnaround times so what uh, what are you doing on reducing the turnaround times for the retailers in terms of fabric production in how much how can you cut down your lead times and how, how can you speed up your productions another interesting question and i have already started uh, 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 being pushed on for the early deliveries um, just to share with you um, one of our main uh, customers in san francisco the agreed lead time used to be 32 or 35 days and now we are talking about 20 25 days you know uh, it's going to be a real challenge it can be done provided if there is a clear forecast so we have the basic raw material available um agility is the name of the game now things are going to change uh, and we see that uh, coming all across from different uh, brands and buyers and cutters so yes uh, uh, delivery is going to be a big challenge that means we need to make sure the supply chain is very well organized we have things in stock we have forecasted our sales uh, uh, properly which is very difficult at the moment uh so it's going to be a little bit of everything in order to make sure that you know we pull back the deliveries by week 10 days uh, do you think uh, you know in coming uh, let's say seasons you know uh, even the retailers would push the mills to you know work on basic you know qualities uh, a few basic qualities which are regular core qualities keep them in production so that they can uh, ask them to supply them uh, quickly very quickly and uh, fashion uh, qualities might get reduced compared to what is there uh, what we see currently with pre covid yes i see that and uh, 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 the brands who have the core programs running for the season uh, they are in a position they can forecast um, if they are able to forecast and they are able to give us a tentative idea of what kind of shade breakdowns in a particular uh, construction is going to be it's going to be easier for us and we are as a responsible partner as one of the important uh, uh, supplier to our customers we will be and we should be in a position to hold on to some stock a readily uh, uh, available stock like a contingency plan you know to be able to ship it on a shorter lead times even for hemp also i think probably that might be a good idea yes, and it is and that is one of the solutions for sure absolutely and you also spoke about very interesting uh, fiber the miabi fiber i mean you already spoke about that i mean but that is uh, something very interesting so maybe a little elaboration on that you know i mean you know uh, because you are very you know among you said you are among the very few mills who are doing it maybe two mills or three mills okay so, all right here is how it started uh, miabi fiber was uh, uh, introduced to us by levi eureka the research development center they were working on this yarn and uh, uh, at that time they approached to mitsubishi in japan and they said that you know we were one of their main development partners so they came up to us and they finally gave us some of the yarns to do some uh, developments and we did ended up making some fabrics which we turned into uh, reasonable uh, uh, orders so that's how we started working with them and then we met and had several conversations and they told me that you know uh, there are only two mills um, there's one in uh, 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 Turkey and the other one in is Navina in denims. Other than that, they're using it for thermal wares. I've seen Miabi uh, fiber composition in Mark Spencer. There are many thermal wear uh, 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 garments where this is used. So that's how I know, and I'm very sure this is up till last season when we were buying, and we have done some uh, good quantities of uh, uh, Miabi in the brush back fabric. So I know. Uh, up till this last season there were only two mills and because they have a control and they, for some reason they don't want to public it i don't know i cannot answer that of course maybe would be able to and mosin you are an expert on hemp you know uh, you have you know i think probably you've done a lot of research on it and so i mean what is your uh, take on you know how hemp how do you see hemp moving forward in especially in denim applications and going very strongly you see going very strongly and uh, uh, Because it's a very circular fabric, much better than uh, circular fiber, sorry, and much better than cotton in those terms. But anything you want to add on this, and uh, what is your prognosis of this? Um, I, I've been really surprised by it. You know, it, it's 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 basically the it's it's the cotton people that have been giving a bad reputation for hemp. You know, since the 1920s, it, it got banned in the 20s. So, and that uh, stigma has stayed until now. You know, everyone. Um, 
it's the fact that it, we only just find only you know us as designers and researchers and R and D people are coming across it and realizing why haven't we used this before? You know, it's literally why haven't we used this before? It's been it's been looking. It's like it's been in the room for many years and we never used it before. So it's just a very surprising thing. And we're finding out more and more positive things about it. Every day I'm learning new things about it. And I'm doing a panel talk about it later on this week as well with all my denim friends. And it's going to be really, it's just, it's just a lot of excitement regarding hemp. And even like Rashi is right. It's like, you know, um, a lot of mills are developing it. A lot of mills are doing interesting things. And it's, it's, it's like a space race again of like who can, it's like, you know, it's the, it's the race how to develop a, um, the most sustainable gene. And we all are in agreement that hemp is, definitely a player in this so is Tencel and so is all these other things and if we can make all of these other friends meet up and you know it's just a really exciting point in time and yeah COVID has definitely woken us up to a lot of things that we are we are doing wrong and that's why it's like a become a full stop we're like okay let's start doing things in a positive way and that's why I'm really pleased that our friends at, 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 at Naveena are saying let's just do R&D let's not worry about the price at the moment the price will come down and other people will follow, you know, we're going to lead at the moment and we're going to do some, you know, other, it's, it's, it's really exciting. And um, everyone, I'm really excited and especially using it as well. I, I found great results using it as a, as a designer, having sewn with it and worked with it with my own hands. Um, it was a complete joy. So I'm, I'm happy to champion both cotton and hemp, but definitely hemp at the moment has got my, got my, uh, got my attention. So, yeah. I'm sure. I'm sure. So, uh, um, uh, one, 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 one more question, you know, about, about the current practical things, uh, what we're facing, you know, we are not able to meet the, meet the buyers. You are probably all making digital uh, presentations to your uh, customers. Uh, and of course, uh, D brands also fall in, falls in one of those uh, categories. I mean, we are helping to uh, bring the digital, uh, uh, digitally connect the buyers and suppliers. So what is, uh, you, how are you finding, how efficient you are finding in terms of uh, digitally, connect, uh, digitally connecting with the buyers? Uh, Sandeep, uh, as of now, I think this uh, uh, tool has been very, very uh, beneficial for us. It has actually helped us. I remember back in, in November when we, we were moving to Office 360 and I had a chat with my uh, CEO, Masood, and I said, why in the world do you want to do this? We are very happy with whatever we're doing, you know. And his argument was, you know, there are many options and features which we were not using it. And believe me, the day it all happened since then in our lockdowns, we have been having meetings back to back on Zoom and Office 360. And it's just like being there. Yes, there are certain limitations. Of course, the physical touch and things are there that is missing. And we are now in a discussion with different IT companies. There's a company in Italy who's doing a, uh, who's done, developed an app where you know you can literally see the fabric and feel the fabric moving and so on and on. So there is a lot more to be done. And I see this is the way forward. And uh, even once the things go uh, well, uh, I see uh, the virtual meetings will not go out. There's, there's a lot of advantages, save a lot of money, save a lot of time. And you know, only the meetings which are entirely important will be the ones which will be taking place. Otherwise, a, a big unnecessary expense will be out. Uh, we'll, we won't be able to, uh, we won't be doing that. So that is one of the things. So it's going to be there. I feel it's important. I think digital connection, we, oh yeah, sorry, Mohsin, please. I, I also agree. It's like, you know, um, it's it's made us all think that actually we can do a lot of these things online we can do them from home all the rest of it but obviously there's nothing better than feeling a fabric you know it's nothing better than that and i think going forward yes we are going to be doing a lot more online even when physical shows come back there there might be an option where you can have an online version online presence as well so i think it's definitely opened a few doors and it's, it's definitely most people are going to be expecting to have a PDF or an interactive video that's 15 minutes long explaining the collection. It's becoming a standard now of working. Like we've been asked to do a lot of this kind of stuff for some of our friends and it's been quite fun doing it and, and challenging as well. Photographing fabrics as, as like, you know, Rashid, photographing fabrics and having them on a Zoom presentation, it's different. It's very hard to get it right, you know, and you know, some people are doing split screen, some people are doing animations, some people are doing videos that move and, and, even on Zoom, even the font choice can ruin your presentation. Even the music can ruin the presentation. You know, it, it's a really, uh, it's interesting, but the, the, the plat platforms are evolving. There's many more platforms that are not Office 360 or Zoom. There's many more that are coming. So it's only going to get better. And even with your own like deep brands, it's, it's, it's definitely a step in the right direction. It's great. Everything's in one place or, you know, and um, 
for a designer or a developer, it's a great thing to just go in there and select what they want and speak to the actual person on the other side. So yeah, great, great what stuff. What I'd like to add is that, you know, I feel that, you know, this COVID situation and it has actually got us all together more close to each other. Honestly speaking, uh, it was not the way, and I feel that today, anybody from right from east to west, we are all facing the same challenges. And today we are all on the same page. I can feel it that how my customers sitting in Italy and, uh, and Germany and, and the US, how they communicate with us. And the good thing is now we have a access to a larger audience at both ends. Earlier, it used to be only a few people traveling and then coming back and giving the first hand information. Now, we are like the whole office staff is there and we can hear it right from horse's mouth what the designers are talking about, how they feel, feel and how they think. So that is also important. So it has added a lot of value in, in that terms that the, the, the virtual meetings as, is resulting uh, to be good, I think. You know, I mean, uh, 200, 300 people sitting together, I mean, you know, all at one place and uh, watching a presentation and interacting is something which we even physically is difficult to do, you know. Of course, of course. So, I mean, uh, I think this, uh, these are benefits we are discovering as an industry. And I, and I would say, you know, one thing is there definitely one point which I always felt, you know, was that somehow our textile industry has not taken technology to that, you know, adapted technology so much what we should have done. And probably this has now given us the chance to really adapt technology. And, uh, uh, you know, kind of uh, adapt, uh, you know, uh, the latest uh, things which are coming up and, uh, you know, upgrade ourselves. I mean, in some ways we have to upgrade ourselves. Probably we were in some ways uh, behind other industries. Mm -hmm. You're right. So, I mean, I think we have uh, covered most of the questions which have come up. And uh, if any other questions are pending, we'll, uh, I think we'll reply to them on email. We'll come back to them on email. And okay. Navina, you know, Navina team will come back on email, whatever questions you have, or you can even shoot questions to them. Uh, if uh, we'll share the emails with you, you can uh, shoot the questions to them and uh, on to them and to us also for dbrands. And uh, you can, must, you must see the collection, their collection on dbrands and uh, share the view. You know, you, if you like the collections, just uh, uh, put a like out there so that they will come to know and they will immediately respond to them, uh, to you. And you can chat with them directly from there. So, I mean, uh, you can interact with the collection in many ways. Anyways, so um, uh, anything else you would like to share, Rashid, uh, Musin, anything else with the community? We have, uh, we have covered pretty much everything and just want to say thank you, Sandeep, for reaching out to us for this uh, showcasing our, um, our collection at D-Brands. I think it's an actual uh, excellent opportunity for us. Yeah, thank, thank, you. thank you. Yeah, thank you again for including me. I, will, I love talking about denim history and hemp history, so... Thank you for the opportunity. It was entirely my pleasure. And, uh, you know, I want to thank uh, Naveena, I mean, Rashid, uh, because you were one of the earliest supporters for the D-Brand. So, I mean, uh, <laughs> I and do. The first time you came and I said, are you going to charge any subscription? And <laughs> you can do it. But, hey, giving you that idea, make sure we get a, a special discount on that. <laughs> so we so I think a conversation with you uh, a year back, I remember. I think probably we got in the right direction in the right time. So, uh, let's see. Now people... Should yeah, do so. Definitely ahead of your time, definitely. Absolutely. And I would uh, like to thank all the participants over here uh, who have been, you know, spending uh, last one hour with us and all your questions and everything. You just send it to us and uh, we'll get back to you. You will see this presentation also on, uh, we'll put it up on our social media, on our Facebook, on our Instagram and other places. So you can check it out there also, uh, those who have missed it. And uh, let's keep in touch and uh, let's innovate. And Still innovating, yes, thank you. Let's innovate, continue to innovate. Thank you. Thank you, and keep safe. Bye, guys. Keep safe. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye, -bye. Yeah, guys. Bye. Bye bye.